Well, Muslims are often less than impressed with the way their communities are reported in the media, but it's not often they get the chance to tell that to journalists face to face. Hmm, the journalists are listening to us. Can't miss this opportunity. I feel like they're the journalists and we're, you know, the Muslims and... How do we engage with the media? Where the media only wants to speak to Muslims who they see as progressive. No, 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 no. We want to speak to anybody who's got a passionate opinion. This conference might allow the journalists to see where Muslims are coming from and allow Muslims to see where the journalists are coming from. Today in Melbourne, young Muslims did just that. I've always been interested in the uh, in the relationship between the Muslim community and the media, and it seems quite dysfunctional most of the time. So I thought I'd come along and, and see what I could contribute to. I'm actually studying to be a journalist. My main reason for coming to this conference is to find out ways to understand the way the media works. I guess it's a way to from both sides to understand each other. I think it's important you know, to listen to people that are in the industry talk about issues that affect Muslims in the media. I'm from the UK and I'm very active in the Muslim community there so I'm looking to uh, compare and contrast the experiences of the Australian Muslim sort of story. 
I've always been interested in, in the media and, and what the media says about Muslims. It's always, you know, a lot of negative things that have been saying, um, that have been said. So for me it was about um, sharing different thoughts and ideas with other Muslims, with young Muslims and um, journalists particularly, um, ones that we know of and see in the media. I don't know much about other um, media, I've kind of disengaged in that way. And as well as that, I feel that I'm not that articulate and so I wanted to um, become more active within the media outlet. And so I thought this would be a perfect opportunity to get to um, know about the journalism field. I believe it's uh, uh, one of the first and biggest to deal with the issues regarding young people and young Muslims specifically uh, and their dealing with the media and how they can actually be more active and be more involved in uh, presenting their voice, presenting their image, the true image of the community. Think of one aspect of Islam, where you know most people in Australia, or in the West of Australia in particular in this case, let alone journalists, are completely wrong about it. And every chance you get, tell them nicely. But don't get angry. Don't get even. Just be really nice. Like I study professional communication at RMIT, and um, it comes a lot of shock to people there and the students that I wear a scarf and I want to get into the same industry that labels me as a terrorist. Well, this is cliche, but terrorism, I guess. <laughs> um, the role of women um, in Islam. Um, I have a lot of people telling me I dress normal and I look normal, even though they might not be patronising or condescending, it's like, yeah, I am normal, you know. Sometimes when I um, see coverage about, for example, Muslim leaders who have a kind of skewed view of things, um, I feel like, why are they getting in touch with people who have a more balanced view? In the SBS, in your SBS office, yeah. what kind of what kind of questions? Uh, things like when can you call uh, someone a terrorist? How do you balance the story? How do you let people express their opinions but without breaking the law? When when a journalist told they can re refer to someone as a terrorist, it's a, it's a little bit tricky because uh, you know a very easy way to to use the word is when you have a direct quote. Today in Melbourne, young Muslims did just that. The ABC's Stephanie March was there. You don't have to look too far to find stories about Islamic issues in the Australian media. But some Muslims have an issue with the way they're being portrayed. It's all around things like women wearing burqas and, and whether, or whether or not that's acceptable, halal meat taking over Australia, Sharia law being imposed by ruthless Muslims. And these are very unfair stereotypes. The meeting of journalists and Muslims offered the opportunity to open some dialogue. Rightly or wrongly, a lot of Australians perceive Muslims as uh, either condoning terrorism or even being involved in terrorism, although we know that you know, terrorists are a very small percentage of the community. So a lot of readers actually want to read about these sort of issues. But it's the way those issues are being presented that can be problematic. You did a very good story. You profiled me and my work as a surgeon, but the headline said, Islam terror threat in big writing, and then there was this big picture of me. <laughs> My major concern when it comes to dealing with anyone from the Islamic community is finding someone when I want them. The problem isn't 
that you're not unified. I think it's better to have this diversity. Uh, someone was mentioning at lunch about, you know, Muslims are very concerned <coughs> about this issue of unity, and especially unity in the media. Don't so feel because you're not united mm. against what? That it's, it's not good. You know, the, the, the Christians at Easter, you know, they, they, you know, we say we want to celebrate Ramadan on the same day and we want to have Eid on the same day. The Orthodox Church and the, and the Roman Church have a week between each Easter and the, the Orthodox are just are louder when they come out with their candles and, and they don't care, like they're, they're quite fine. <laughs> and Muslims don't look at them and go, oh look, they're so divided, they have a week between Easter. So I just think it's a, anyway. Yeah, just being able to contextualise um, the Muslim community and to understand that when one person says or does something, that he's one person in the community um, and that it's the responsibility of those who are reporting to put these comments in context. It's very easy to find the crazy imam that's, that wants to declare war on everybody, but for them they're saying it's very hard for them to, to, to find other spokespeople. So that's an issue that we're recognising, that we need to have better spokespeople out there. Sometimes that's what it is, it's just a person goes out there, speaks with the journalists, but they're only representing themselves in their own views. And journalists may um, see that as being that the whole, the whole community. And what we'll talk about is, you know, we need to provide more training to be able to speak to journalists. And are you going along to one of the sessions this afternoon? Yeah. Which one are you going to? Um, I'm going to the interviewing one. I hope to um, be able to answer um, a lot more media questions with um, more ease and to be able to um, kind of not misrepresent what I'm trying to convey because I think I have trouble with that today. You know? Asylum seekers in the community, good thing or bad thing? I think it's a fantastic thing. I think that. Um, Okay. It's a fantastic thing because with the mental health issues happening in the community, in the um, detention centres, there's only good to come out of it. We don't want people going on hunger strikes, we just want people to be safe until their claims are processed and then we can decide what to do with them. This has been a practice session. We have been brainstorming. Okay. What's your reaction to the government's plan to put asylum seekers into the home of Australians or Havens? It's a fantastic idea. I think the Australians other side. I'm studying journalism at the moment. It helps me to understand what I'm doing to the other side and also how to equip myself to deal with questions. Did you get out of the workshop? Your answer should be short and concise um, and to the point. And even if the interviewer is trying to take another avenue and throw you off guard, um, you should always stick to your main message. And how were the sandwiches for lunch? They were great, but that's not the message that I'm trying to convey here. I'm trying to convey that the workshop was brilliant and the conference is also brilliant. There are some young people in the media training I did today who are passionate. They need to put their thoughts and ideas down on paper and share them, and so you prepare. I think the workshops went really well. We had um, five fabulous groups. I think they picked up on my MBE very well. MBE stands for? Main because an example. It's my communication tool. I think they did really well, and I really hope that they'll put their hand up and do lots more media. Do you know what? Everyone did so well during the interviews with very little practice. It's amazing what people can actually come out with without actually having to rehearse that much. There's a lot of like, eloquent, well-spoken people and it's just really good. Yeah. All the best people in crisis management and media management generally have the phone numbers, the mobile numbers of the journalists that can ring them and the journalists won't be pissed off with their numbers. I did crisis um, or remind you what was all off the record. I went to the crisis management workshop and yep. that was uh, really good. The work has to happen months and months before. We need to have a relationship with the media. You know, the crisis breaks and you're running around trying to find phone numbers or what have you. So the first thing is you need to spend right now, if, you, if this is what you think you're going to do, 
it is start developing relationships with media. Some people are looking more of forward for them, and so they can actually have your contact with them, so they can call you straight away. So just about um, being available. He gave us four or five rules. And I should have written them down, but yes, those rules are quite important. The last is that if a conflict happens, uh, you try to diverge. The other thing that's really important that you struggle with a lot in community groups is having a dedicated spokesperson who's on message, right? And and they need to be on message and absolutely available all the time. If you don't engage with the media, you may get uh, still get negative negative impressions because they will say that we could try to contact you and you are not approachable. Honestly, um, Ron was fantastic. A lot of the times, the journalists like person I don't feel comfortable talking because you know you do feel really intimidated to speak to them. The kind of um, really like they're, they're the journalists and where you know the Muslims. You don't want your words to be um, twisted or you know put in a way that you didn't mean for it to be. So. Try to engage with them and try to divert the story into a different direction of your choose so you can have some control. If you are in a position of power, try to avoid something which can cause a conflict. So if you find yourself in a media crisis, what's the first thing you're going to do? Uh, well, try not to get myself into a crisis in the beginning. Read the newspapers, watch TV, listen to the radio and work out which journalists are reporting which stories. Now, as a former journalist, the hardest thing we found is to find stories. People we love are the people who brought us stories. Right, so you need to really study the media like you would study any other subject and work out who's writing on Islamic issues, who are the best writers, who's doing the right things, who are the problems, because you shouldn't just go with the people who are good. And then what you do is you offer up content. We're always content hungry and you need to fill the vacuum. So you develop relationships and before you know it, you're having a coffee with the journalist and, and, and they, they're your mate. So what we just was the four rules of crisis management or my four rules. That First one, obviously, is don't have a crisis. We looked at a number of scandals and they were all self-inflicted. Be prepared. There's no point trying to deal with the crisis on the day it happens. Rules rule number three. Yeah. What was that? The diversion principle. Yeah, so you can't stop a story. Everyone goes, this shouldn't be happening. Well, you know, it's happening. Deal with it. So what do you do? You can't change the story, but you can divert the story. And then rule number four is fill the vacuum. You know, everyone talks about why do these stories get a good run? You know, these anti-Islamic stories. It's because there's a story, and we need a story, and that's it. And you guys aren't providing the story, so fill the vacuum, own the space. Quite interesting to hear the feedback from the group and to hear the, the perceptions of the media and, and uh, to challenge some of the stereotypes. You know, I talked about how the media stereotypes um, Islamic issues, and I think that um, possibly that goes both ways. And the secret to winning over the media, I think, and, or having a, a deeper, better engagement with the media, is to really understand that. Can you just describe um, the World, yes, yes. World Cafe for me? I'm a little confused. Okay. World Cafe is, is a, a technique where you basically, it's like a coffee, it's like a, a co cafe discussion where you, um, you know where all the juicy bits actually come up. You know, conferences are boring, but when people are actually in more intimate settings, a bit more relaxed, a bit more laid back, the, the real stuff comes out. So that's what World Cafe is doing. It's a way to, I guess, get different conversational ideas and then swap people around to cross-pollinate. Uh, basically a lot of ideas out there, um, different views, and the word tolerance is very important to everybody. Sure, and, and uh, could you elaborate on the word tolerance? Uh, basically we don't want it to be used within the media, respect is a proper word, because tolerance doesn't mean you get along with anybody, it's just it's, 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 it's a barrier between people. And res respect will work because? Respect because you respect each other's view, you know, you might not, you respect the individual, you might not agree with their views, but you still respect the individual.
that isn't actually defined as news that's unreported. The pressure to produce news and produce it quickly now is enormous with the internet. So, how, how you mesh that sensitivity and understanding with tight deadlines is really um, an imponderable issue. I often say news uh, is what is in the public interest, but it's also what is of public interest. We can see extremes of investigative journalism. Uh, in-depth reporting on one side, and as someone here said, uh, entertainment on the other. Both uh, fall into that news category. Location is a factor that is proximity to the news event, which is why when a thousand people die in floods somewhere uh, in Africa, the headlines here are generally about two Australians missing. It's not the role of journalism per se to tell the audience that everything is hunky-dory. The role of true, proper, in-depth, serious journalism is to expose uh, the foibles and corruption and be a watchdog of those in power. Probably it is a young person's battle that you're fighting on behalf of the rest of the community because of right or wrong, Australia will take more notice of somebody who was born here than somebody who wasn't. Get to the media and show your passion for whatever the topic is. It's not easy. It's not easy because there's, you know, there's hundreds of people, I think, the uh, Herald Sun did a survey to figure out that they got something like 350 media releases a day. So, you know, you, you're competing. That sort of stuff I've just been hinting at and, and inferring about, about religious confusion. Trust is in the minds of the most people in the media. I just wanted to know what you think thought about that. Oh, it's going to happen. There's a reality. You know, it's going to happen. There are going to be things that get out there that aren't true. So what do you do about it? You know, you get out there and you correct the record. Yeah. You get out there straight away. And you say, they need to apologise, you know, whoever the original source is, they call the editor to make an apology, and then when he doesn't, in the time between your calling, that's the story. Just redirect it. Things are going to go wrong, they go wrong all the time. Again, you can't change the rules, you just got to win by the rules that are there. But I don't think a good starting point is to start saying that we are right and other people are wrong. Maybe the starting point should be possibly no one. In the new world, we can all be citizen journalists, but we face the same ethical dilemmas as professional journalists, and in common with them, we need to have strong ethical standards and a commitment to upholding them. I think it's a really good opportunity for young Muslims to engage with people in the media. Also for me to, I guess, give back and to encourage young Muslims to get involved in the media because I know what it's like growing up when you feel as if you're not represented and um, how powerless you can feel. So hopefully this will encourage young Muslims to get involved and get active and get their voice heard. When we can see a greater representation of Muslims working in the media and reporting on general issues, then I think we'll get a little bit more of a breakdown in terms of cultural awareness. If you can't beat them, join them. Stephanie March, ABC News, Melbourne. In the long run, I think it's to do with identity. One of the most underestimated and powerful words, I think, on the, on the planet. What people think they are, and to a large extent, what people think they are comes from what they say they believe, what they've been led to believe, or what they've been taught to believe, or in many cases, what they genuinely do believe. I think it's also a two-way direction. The media needs to go out and maybe uh, to forge uh, better con uh, contacts, with, not with the uh, usual suspects, uh, the main ones we always hear uh, from, but uh, just try to seek uh, new voices, interesting ones. You've got to find the people that are passionate enough to make it their priority. Go to the young guys, they've got more time. You know, go to these guys and say, you guys take a leadership role here. Asking the media not to be the media is not the solution to you putting over the media. Putting over the media. There are plenty of radio stations that offer you a chance to raise a topic. Raise the topic. Start the conversation. Be moderate, be fair, be reasonable and be honest. And often it's quite random. You can be, you know, trying to talk to a journalist for quite a while and, and the stories keep coming and you don't get in there and then all of a sudden bang. Consumer media. You've got to understand. You know, there's no point wanting the media to, to reflect your, your position yes. if you don't understand the media. You know, so consume it, work out who's writing what, who's saying what. You have to find those journalists and, and make contact. 
there's a pattern appears, and suddenly you go, okay, well, if I go with that guy, I'll get a good run, if I go with that guy, I'll get a bad run. We talk to people and don't write stories with them every day, but they're ringing you, talking to you, reminding you. It's all that engagement, you know, and unfortunately it's engagement one way, because the media's not going to engage with you, they're too busy. The resources have been stripped out of the media for the last two decades. Not, not a lot left, you know, so they work really hard, they don't have a lot of money doing it, and they've got no time at all. You know, so it's your job to get their attention. And don't forget to remind people that you're not going to go away. 1.5 billion people, a quarter of the world's population, are here to your faith and culture. And I keep telling people, don't hold your breath. They're not going to wake up on Monday morning and go to communion. Or they're not going to suddenly become Presbyterians or Buddhists. They are Muslim. That is their identity. If you're not happy with something, uh, go there and express your opinion. Uh, you can change things if you are active. You can change things if you just don't sit within your small community thinking that there is a great conspiracy theory against you. There, there aren't, or maybe I'm not aware of it anyway. <laughs> go out there and have fun. Thoughts on Andrew Bolt? I love Andrew Bolt. He is the best journalist out there. He's not a journalist. Uh, oh. He seriously is the best. Do you also love Andrew Bolt? I disagree. Would you invite Andrew Bolt to meet your dad? Yes, I will. Right. Actually, you know what? Actually, I would. And you should bring Andrew Bolt here. I really want to meet to come up. I might dislike him because of the viewpoints that he puts in the newspapers. But he's probably, that's what he's paid for. He's paid to do that. That's what I actually people. like about him. I love his rudeness. And maybe his viewpoints are actually different when he's off the record. Great. It's, it's good to hear diversity of views here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and Andrew Bolt's the best. Where do you think your comedy career might go from here? Uh, Lil White. What countries do you reckon you'll go to first? Lebanon. Yep. <laughs> Please! Why Lebanon? Um, for the bomb shelters. Yeah, haven't you ever heard about bomb shelters? You're in a Lebanon for the bomb shelters. Bomb shelters, which is an a disco. disco. Maybe you should start a bomb shelter in Melbourne. Yeah, we should actually. But who's going to bomb it? Um, good question. Um, serious question. Um, do you think um, Muslims um, can laugh at themselves? The, the way I express my love to her is by insulting her. <laughs> the braces, chain tracks. Chain tracks. tracks. And I wear glasses, so uh -huh. I'm like, I'll be better. <laughs> And, and any final thoughts or jokes or... I love you, Bill. You are the best. I'm humbled and flattered. You're flattered? Look how fat you are. Assalamu <laughs> <laughs> alaikum. Allah my. Thanks, MME. Thanks, MME. Thanks, MME. Thank you. Thanks, MME. Thank you very much, MME. Thanks, MME. Thanks, MME. Thanks, MME. Thanks, MME. I just want to thank all the organisers for the effort they've put in. It's absolutely tremendous. And yeah, I'm really appreciating it. And just to you know, all you guys, I, I just, I feel, I, I actually feel very humbled and inspired. So thank you. It's the same thing. I am overwhelmed because we, when we started thinking about this, we were thinking about a small conference. You know, we were thinking of a sort of town. Twitter's coming in from around the world. Twitter's coming in from around the world.
Oh, thanks for coming. I'm not actually Muslim, by the way. It's, uh, Say again? I'm not actually Muslim. Ah, right, no, that's cool. Okay. Get off camera. <laughs> <laughs> Who did you uh, come here to see, really, you know? I thought George Negus, of course. I heard there was going to be free sandwiches, and yeah. uh, there was. I've been in the media for quite a long time, so I would love to see what he has. Quite a smoothie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like the uh, chicken ones, because they're halal. I know your parents want to be a doctor and lawyer and The end of the conference has been a successful I'm, I'm, day. I'm George Negus is walking out right now. He's being hounded by people. The exchange of words, there was one of the participants did get a bit testy with him, but um, he's handled with grace. You know, that's what it's all about. It's about dialogue. It's about discussion. Free speech, that's right. It's certainly, certainly having it right now. So uh, it's been a wonderful, wonderful conference. On your mind with the Kardashians of the conference. Uh, Shama, we have Rashid, Rashid and Sarah, um, uh, brother in the middle uh, with his two lovely sisters on either side. Are we going to get some uh, family conflict over the next uh, couple of days? Is there an issue in the media that you guys disagree on? Something you, you all come together on? Uh, 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 George Niggas is pretty cool. I like his moustache and his hairstyle. When I grow up, I'm going to brush my hair like him. I think we've heard enough from the gut issues of the conference. <laughs> Jade, can you just explain World Cafe to me? Um, World Cafe is um, kind of like a, a thing that they use to generate discussion in a more casual environment. Um, and they're going to try and get some debate going over some big questions, I think. But don't quote me. Thanks, Jade. <laughs> this has been great. <laughs> I don't Was there a good Twitter in your mind? Did you, was there a best Twitter? Yeah, we picked a Twitter. Oh, you guys going home, eh? That's right, cut me off. No, no, you, no, you're coming. <laughs> the Twitter thing was just amazing. We thought it was an extraordinary, extraordinary effort by everybody. And Agnes and I just felt that we could just sit and allow it to just do its own thing. The one thing it has been is, is constant. Um, the Muslim communities, but it has always been um, about minority groups. So, for example, um, the Chinese community back in the 1850s, I mean, there were so many bad things written about them in Australia. It has stopped a bit, but um, now there's like this um, other take on it, you know, the, the China problem and all that. China problem as in um, the Australian public um, reacting pretty negatively towards China's rise. There was a uh, also, Australian government sometimes been a little bit inconsistent on how they deal with China sometimes, I find. But, um, yeah, that's always been part of, you know, sometimes the media misrepresent things, but whether their intentions to do it or not, I mean, I don't know, but it's also the community's responsibility to get in there and tell them that, you know, um, we are not like that, but we are like this, but in a more positive manner. How do you see the relationship between the media and, and Muslims in Australia in five years? I think uh, there is a the, the new generation of Muslims uh, understand Australia. They understand the media, and they are more open and more positive. And conferences like this are giving us skills and tools uh, to engage properly with the media. So I do hope that in next 20, in the next five years uh, there is a much better relationship. But I haven't thought about it from the point of uh, view of forecasting yet. Sure. If you could forecast it and get back to us, that would be great. I, I'll try to do it tomorrow.
My gut tells me that sometimes, um, you know, racism in Australia is kind of like a fruit of the month kind of thing. You know, it's seasonal, like it'll blow over, it'll blow over quite soon. But at the same time, um, you know, as Imad said, you know, that young Muslims are more positive. They they understand Australian culture, and um, if they're passionate about, you know, creating change, I think, um, you know, bridges can be built. So optimistic. <laughs>